with. <laughs> to you I just I just feel like you're not the same you used to be it's just something has changed he's got the whole wide world in his hands I think it's completely preposterous I would not play when they are sit sit when there are serious matters at hand I'm a very solemn serious person because you know, I think that's what it's all about. You know, you've got to find out what kind of accent this is. I don't know it. It's foolishness. What's up, y'all? Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the walk live for all you who have been rocking with me since day one you know i love you you know i love you and i thank you for continuing to support and continuing to watch every week and for all of you who are new thank you for stopping by i hope you like what you see and what you hear my name is sakima and i post on this channel every tuesday uh what do i post on this channel i post um, nuggets lessons that god has given me uh, throughout my my journey with him and they have helped me chip away at some of the barriers that have been in my path so my hope is that it will help you as well so let's get to it y'all let's get to it so today um i wanted to talk it's actually going to be a bit of a story time y'all so um i guess story slash testimony because when somebody says story time, I always think of something like good, like a good story. And I would not necessarily call this one of those good, entertaining stories, maybe for some people, but this is more of a testimony. Um, and so I am going to be a bit more transparent than I have been before. Um, some of you may know um, this story I'm about to tell, but some of you may not. So... Welcome inside my life. In 2008-ish, uh, 2009, um, around that time, I had just moved to Nashville. And um, I had joined a group. It was um, a group that stemmed from people I knew from church. And it was kind of like one of those tie tribute type situations. So there was a leader of the group and he, he kind of talked and was the hype man of the group, was the leader of the group. He wrote songs for us and all of that. And we sang the songs and we did our routines, we danced, we would rehearse, we would go around to different places in the city and perform. And it was awesome. It, it was um, a definitely Christian based uh, group. So... We sang songs about God. Um, I That was awesome. Um, since I was young, I was always involved in some type of something, whether it been the youth group um, at my church or just some sort of group where there were others who were my age who were like me. Um, and, you know, we all were there for the same purpose to learn about God. You know, some of us against our will and some of us um were enjoying it um anyhow so i got in this group and i thought this is awesome you know parents often say that it's not good for you to be like idle for children for teens or young adults whatever to be idle sitting around um because you know we get into trouble so um here i was in this group i was like yes we out here shaking it for jesus <laughs> and I was like, this is pretty darn awesome. So, um, somewhere along the way in there, uh, we had a, uh, what was it? It was a rehearsal. And our leader told us that we were gonna have some dancers come in and um, they were gonna be a part of our performance coming up. So they were gonna rehearse with us. Um, well, fast forward, I knew one of the dancers, went to school with that person and 
um, fast forward again, I ended up reconnecting and I ended up becoming pregnant in 2008. Yeah. Um, that was at the height of our like performing. Um, I remember still going, even when I could not be a part of the performance, I remember still going and sitting in the audience and, you know, um, just supporting the other members of the group as they performed. I remember thinking to myself, like, what in the world? Why am I out in the audience and not up there? What have I done? Um, but anyway, I still would go and support them. Um, so from there, there was a lot of things that happened in between that time. Um, like I had, well, after that time, I, um, just, there was a lot of situations going on and I'm going to fast forward to about 2017, 18. Um, I had, um, been in MIT. For those of you who are not familiar with that, MIT stands for Minister in Training. And uh, that's a program in our church. Um, it's a course. It's probably like three years where at the end of it, you are a licensed minister. Um, and I joined that. Um, I had gone through a breakup uh, right before I joined that. And I had this epiphany and I was like, Lord, you know, I'd already always been interested in the things of God. And I wanted to, you know, learn how to minister to God's people. I wanted to learn how I should be, you know, within myself, like just how I should be conducting myself, you know, what does it mean to minister? What does it mean to be ministered to? How, how do I reach people? How do I touch people? Just what are the different ways I can minister to people? Um, and that was awesome for me. Um, it was a time of getting back on track after feeling like everything had fallen apart. Um, um, I ended up having an issue with my car and, um, the person that I met that helped me rectify that whole situation, um, uh, obviously there was ungodly, an ungodly connection there. Um, and fast forward, <laughs> um, so again, uh, 2017, 18, I became pregnant. Um, why am I telling you this? <laughs> Let me tell you, I am a pretty, pretty personal, private person. You may not think so because you see my videos, um, and you see me sharing things and encouraging, but if you notice, there's not much that I say about me and the things that I have done, um, that have been less savory things. So, um, this is, believe it or not, um, very difficult. So why am I telling you this? Because I think it's important, um, as I say all the time that I believe that God has given me something that I'm to share with others because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And this is my testimony. I want you to notice two things here. Um, one um, in each of these scenarios, um, I'm always right smack dab in the middle of doing something for God, of participating in something for God. Um, in the first, I was in the group. In the second scenario, I was in MIT. Um, and I will say the MIT program was a three-year program at that time. And it, I was in my third year. Yes. After I became pregnant, I also, just like I did in the first scenario, I was out. I dropped out of everything. At that time, I had been in the choir. I was on um, worship team uh, at, at, at my church. I was in MIT. So I was like, yes, I was in there. I was right smack dab in the middle of serving. Um... And why am I pointing that out? What is the message here to me from the enemy? It is that you are not worthy. You don't have what it takes to do what God has called you to do or asked you to do because you're not clean enough. You're dirty. Every single time 
I was in the middle of something for God, I was shamed. I did something to shame myself, to bring shame upon myself. I did something that would say, I'm not fit. And that is exactly what the enemy wanted me to believe. And um, I think it's important for us to notice that. Notice the placement of these moments, the placement of these, these scenarios, the timing. Okay, there is a message that the enemy tries to send just as well as there is a message, a message that God wants to give us. And we have to be careful not to play into those things. It's great for us to self-evaluate and see what it is that we can improve on. But that's not what the enemy is looking for. He's just looking for us to self-evaluate and to harp on the things that have happened and to see how much we are horrible and useless. God, however, he wants us to self-evaluate. He wants us to give our troubles, our trials, our hardships, the things that we struggle with to him so that he can in turn make us better, help us to be better, help us to make better decisions the next time around. Um, so I said I wanted you to notice two things. Now, if I had believed the lie of the enemy, then I would have never gotten up from those places. That would have been the end. Not only have I embarrassed myself once, but twice, both with both public embarrassment and both uh, at the height of doing something for God. That would have been it. Um, but um, there was a second one. Okay, so the second one I wanted us to notice here. Um, it is very important for us to make our private value system match our public value system. This is not for people because people are people. The person you're sitting next to that seems the most perfect because I'm sure people thought I was that way. Um, just know my personality and all of that. But the person that is sitting next to you who seems most perfect has their own set of issues. So we're not doing this for people because people have their own things. They don't, they, they are just like us. They're just as flawed as us. We do this for God and we do this for us, for ourselves. My public value system was one that was full of service and devotion to God. But when I left, my private value system did not match my public value system. And eventually that came to light. Joshua 24 urges us to choose who we will, who we will serve. That's very important because all of us have our own things that we're trying to accomplish, okay? You may even know that God has called you in a certain direction, but it's gonna be the most frustrating battle, trying to go that direction as well as be this other person. You're straddling the fence, you're lukewarm, you're double-minded, and you haven't chosen who you're gonna serve. Your service of that other side is going to start to bleed over into what you're trying to do, making it impossible for you to reach your goals. You have to not be one person out in front of everybody and be someone else in private. You cannot sustain it that way. You can't live that way. It does not work that way, especially if you want to live for God. He calls us to be the same person in, pub, in private that we are in public. If we show that we are this person who is devoted to God in public, when we go to church, we pull up at church, we serve and we helping to do all the stuff that we do. We going out, we're giving to the homeless, um, all of that. Then when we leave, we need to make sure that we continue, we continue to have our, our value system in place. We've set up boundaries so that we live for God continuously, that we are not out here doing what we want to do we're not out here getting in how we live we're not out here just doing whatever in the spare time in that private time if we really want to reach a goal then we need to have that integrity 
make sure that what you do it is it, it lines up no matter where you are no matter who you're around okay we're trying to get somewhere we're trying to get somewhere you can't do it you can't do two things you can't serve two masters and some of us may be asking you know um what is it that i can do you know what is it that i need to change do i need to um, get rid of do I need to shape up what am I doing right you know how do I find out what it is within me that needs developing what it is that I need to maybe put a stop to or um, put some boundaries around or what is it that I need to keep doing more or of and there are many ways to answer that question but the first thing I would tell you to do is to read your word the Bible says in Hebrews 4:12 For the word of God is living and active and full of power making it operative energizing and effective it is sharper than any two-edged sword penetrating as far as the division of the soul and spirit uh, the completeness of a person and both of both joints and marrow the deepest parts of our nature exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart if you want to go through this process to make sure you are in order, that you're not sabotaging your own stuff, that you are not getting in your own way by being on both sides of the fence or having something here that maybe you don't even realize is out of order. If you want to take yourself through that process just to, and we do this often, this is not a one-time thing. You, you go through this refining process, this self-evaluation process constantly. As you submit yourself to God, as you walk with God, this is going to happen all the time. But if you want to do this, then you have to continue to get in your word. It says here that the word is a two, sharper than a two-edged sword. And, and um, it exposes and judges the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. So this is one way that we can really dig down and see, let me uproot this, whatever this is, right now. Because what I don't want to happen is what happened to my sister, me. Okay, you see me. You see this happening to me. And so you don't have to experience the same thing. You can be forewarned that this is definitely what the enemy is trying to do. He is grooming you. He wants to, see, I didn't, I didn't even have my, so I love him, I love him, I love him. But I, I didn't have my earthly father around a lot when I was young. And so, um, you know, the grooming started early, searching for some type of something, some type of validation, some type of affection from a male. And then you get older and you don't have any boundaries on that desire. You don't have any reins. You're not, you don't have the reins on it. You haven't submitted it fully to God. And then it begins to spiral out of control and you begin to perform. Meaning you begin to be who you need to be in front of people. And then when you go home, you're somebody else. You give in to all the desires, all the things that the enemy has been grooming you to be. But eventually you do have to choose. Let me tell you. <laughs> all right. So. I had a note that was attached to this scripture. I made a note in my YouVersion Bible app. I wrote, this scripture is great for those who think they are beyond repair, that their heart is something that is too hard to affect. The word can pierce anything and anyone if we submit to the process. It can also find the parts of us that are out of order and need to get aligned with God. It can also confirm the parts of us that are amazing and growing even when others or even ourselves don't feel like it. The word is sharper than any two-edged sword going to places that nothing else and no one else can go. So, I urge you today to choose who you will serve. I urge you today, before it is too late, to make your 
private value system match your public value system. Don't just be out here performing. Don't just be out here having integrity, being a good person in front of people. Whenever no one's watching or you feel no one's watching because we know that God is always watching. Whenever there, you feel like no one's watching, you should be that same person, have that same integrity. Okay? You see someone drop their wallet, return the wallet. Okay? Don't be this person in front of folks and then be this person when you're not in front of folks. When you feel like it doesn't matter. When you feel like no one is watching. Because God is watching. And he is, he is always working in our lives. Um... He told us that if we are faithful over a few things, he'll make us ruler over many. So the things that you feel are pointless, who's going to know anyway? Who's going to find out anyway? What does it matter? Who else am I bothering anyway? Is who, who cares? God does. And it matters. It matters. Be upstanding even in those private matters and see the, the direction that God takes you in and see what God will do in your life. There are many other things that come into play, many other things that, that, that fall in line when you begin to operate publicly and privately the way that God would have you to. I know you may think that you... Um, you know, this is being told to you and it's so cliche and whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, why, you know, but if you're a parent, you know this, you want so much to have your kids comprehend all of the lessons you try to give them. Some of the things they don't comprehend right away. They don't understand the why. They don't under understand why you are telling them that they can or can't do something and they should or shouldn't do something. And we wish that we could tell you why and that you would comprehend it. But the, the truth is, a lot of times we won't right then. It'll take some things for us to get it. Same thing here with God. There are things I know that don't make sense to you right now. Or they seem ridiculous and frivolous like, you know, God is just a party pooper. <laughs> but there are so many different things, different parts here that... Your decisions can affect, it can go beyond what you think. Sin does not just take the inch that you give it. You give it an inch and it takes a mile. It takes a million miles. So it's important to nip this in the bud. I hope this helps someone. And I thank you all, all for listening. Thank you so much for hearing me out. Um, this is my prayer that the things that I experience and the things that God has allowed me to experience, the things that God has sustained me through will be the very thing that helps the next person. I know that all of this is not in vain. Neither are the things that you do and neither are the things that God brings about in your life and brings you through. So... Thank you guys so much. As I said, my journey with God has been just that, a journey, one that I feel like I meant to share with you. And so I thank you so much for joining me on the walk live.